This time on the great funny man Woody Allen, the father of Timo Leste, Zanana Guzmao, acting maestro Laurence Olivier, and America's sweetheart Mary Pickford. But first, Joe DiMaggio, the Yankee Clipper. In 1969, to commemorate the centenary of professional baseball, a group of journalists pondered the question of America's greatest ball player. They came to the conclusion that Yankee clipper Joe DiMaggio deserved that mantle. While there were players in the game with higher averages, none could rival the perfection DiMaggio applied to every facet of the game. He had no weaknesses, said teammate Tommy Henrik. Whether he was up to bat, pitching, or in the outfield, no one could come close. Opponent Hank Greenberg told Sport Magazine that the only way to get a hit against the Yankees was to hit him where Joe wasn't. Born in California in 1914 to Sicilian parents, DiMaggio entered pro baseball as an 18-year-old, following in his older brother Vince's footsteps to the disappointment of their father, who wanted them to be fishermen like himself. He became a sensation and four years later made his major league debut for the New York Yankees, who he led to nine titles in 13 years. DiMaggio's greatest achievement was a 56-game hitting streak in 1941. His strike rate was phenomenal, and his 361 career home runs met with just 369 strikeouts. DiMaggio put his all into his ball play, concentrating ferociously as the ball came towards him and swiping it with the deep, elegant swing for which he was renowned. Asked why he was putting so much effort into an unimportant game played late in his career, DiMaggio said, because there is always some little kid who may be seeing me for the first time. I owe him my best. In 1949, the Yankees held a special day to honor DiMaggio and his amazing achievements. DiMaggio wrote in his 1951 autobiography that he was overcome by the occasion. Here I was, an immigrant fisherman's son standing in front of 70,000 people and alongside the mayor of the world's greatest city, he said. It was overwhelming. And I believe, in closing my speech, I said, thank the good Lord for making me a Yankee. I've never been more serious in my life. Divorced from his first wife in 1943, DiMaggio caused a sensation when he married screen siren Marilyn Monroe after a whirlwind romance. The high-profile couple eloped to San Francisco City Hall in 1954 and spent their honeymoon in Japan. The public considered it the marriage of the century. A recent exhibition on the Queen Mary cruise ship displayed some mementos from their relationship, but despite the couple's evident love for each other, there were problems from the start. The fourth salon is the love story. We're sitting in the four, this one, and it's Marilyn and Joe. And this is where it's a combination of Joe's things and Marilyn's, but it is the things, as I look around here, gifts that Marilyn gave to Joe or gifts that Joe gave to Marilyn. Photographers and fans constantly beset the couple, and DiMaggio was unprepared for the hysteria that accompanied Marilyn wherever she went. 274 days after the wedding, Monroe filed for divorce on the grounds of mental cruelty. But DiMaggio never got over Marilyn. After the collapse of her marriage to Arthur Miller and admittance to a psychiatric hospital to treat her drug addiction, DiMaggio came back into her life and encouraged her to break off friendships with people who were supporting her destructive ways. There was talk that they might remarry, but sadly Monroe was found dead of an overdose before anything could be finalized. DiMaggio took charge of her funeral and barred celebrity guests from attending. He sent a dozen red roses to her crypt every week for the next 20 years and never remarried. A gentleman to the end, he never publicly spoke about their relationship. Modest, unassuming, and a hero to millions, DiMaggio holds a special place in American history. He died in 1999 and is interred at Holy Cross Cemetery in Colma, California. According to his lawyer, his last words were, I'll finally get to see Marilyn. On his gravestone, DiMaggio's brother Dominic wrote, dignity, grace, and elegance personified.
three. 